Hello everyone, Vic here with Phone Arena and I have with me the two $1100 flagships of Apple and Samsung. This is the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. These are arguably the best smartphone the two companies offer and today we'll do a quick comparison between their most important specs and features. As always, we start with the design. The Note 10 Plus is a big step forward in terms of looks. The bezels around the display are almost entirely gone thanks to this tiny hole that houses the front-facing camera. Compared to last year's Note 9, the Note 10 looks sleek and modern. That feeling is enhanced by the Note 10's thinner body which makes it more comfortable to hold and less bulky when you put a case on it. On the back, there is now a vertical camera array housing the three main cameras and a tiny time-of-flight sensor next to it. To complete the fancy aesthetic, there is a new Aurora Glow finish that changes colors based depending on the light. In Camp Apple, the design changes are minimal. On the front, the iPhone 11 Pro Max looks just like the iPhone XS Max. Big notch at the top, third year in a row. While turning it around, however, things start to differ. First, unlike the Note, the iPhone has gained some weight and it shows. Is the added bulk worth it, however? Keep watching to find out. On the back we see the biggest change coming to this year's iPhones. The new camera bump, with three smaller bumps on top of it, looking at you like a surprised insect. Some love the new look, others hate it. For us, it's an acquired taste, but we'll get to the cameras and what they can do in a bit. First, let's go through a rundown of the hardware specs of the two phones. For displays, we have a 6.8 inch one on the Note 10 Plus versus a 6.5 inch one on the 11 Pro Max. Both OLED, both high resolution, with the Note having a slight edge over the iPhone with its Quad HD resolution, but by default it's set to Full HD. Where Apple has an edge, however, is screen brightness. This year's Pro iPhones have new displays that can top around 800 nits of brightness and can hit 1200 nits for parts of the display when enjoying HDR content. Despite these slight differences, both displays look gorgeous and are considered some of the best of the market, and for a good reason. What's driving these displays from the inside is also quite impressive. Apple's A13 Bionic chip is crushing it when it comes to performance, but the Snapdragon 855 within the Note 10 Plus is no slouch either. Top performance coming from both sides of the ring, as expected. The iPhone receives a serious blow in one category and that is storage. The iPhone 11 Pro Max comes with only 64GB of base storage and that's just not ok for a flagship phone in 2019, especially one costing that much. The Note 10 Plus on the other hand comes with 256 gigs and a slot for expandable storage on top of that. To finish off the specs list and avoid the rage of tech nerds, we have to mention that the Note also has 3 times more RAM than the iPhone. Now, specs are one thing, but how does it feel to use these phones in the day to day? Well, the iPhone feels like any other iPhone really. It runs the same iOS 13 any other iPhone released in the last 4 year does. Of course, with the 11 Pro Max there are no signs of lag or any hiccups, even when using more demanding apps. But ultimately, there is nothing exciting or different about it. This is where the Note 10 Plus says, hold my beer, and pulls out its S Pen. The S Pen is more than just your regular stylus. It lets you scribble a quick note on the display, use it as a camera trigger, or even change camera modes. Granted, it's not a vital feature by any means, but if you're the type of person that would make use of it every day, there's really nothing that can replace it. It's what gives the Galaxy Note its name and has plenty of loyal fans that would hate to see it gone. Trust me on that one. Apart from the unique software features that come with the S Pen, Samsung's One UI is built with productivity in mind. You can separate apps in pop-up windows and arrange them any way you want. If you're not that productive, just have the screen split in half so you can listen to a YouTube video while texting. Can you do that on the iPhone? Nope. But how long can you enjoy these pinnacles of smartphone technology before having to ground them for a recharge? Well, this is where the iPhone's expanded guts come into play. Despite still having a smaller battery than the Note, the iPhone manages to squeeze out of it about an hour more useful screen on time, according to our new battery test, which you can check in the description below. This makes the iPhone 11 Pro Max the new benchmark for flagship battery life and competitors will have a hard time beating it. 
Now it's time to take a look at the camera performance, a category every flagship wants to dominate, but only a few succeed. Hardware-wise, the two phones have a similar toolkit at their disposal. Main camera, telephoto camera, ultra-wide-angle camera, and of course, a selfie camera at the front. So let's look at a few camera samples. Daytime shooting is a breeze for both phones, and differences come down to the approach of each camera. The Note opts for more striking visuals, with increased color saturation and sharper edges, while the iPhone sticks to a more realistic representation that some might find a little bit bland. Things get interesting when the sun gets involved with its extreme brightness coming from weird angles, or in other words, when HDR comes into play. The iPhone consistently handles both the brightest areas of the pictures and the shadowy parts better than the Note 10. The same can't be said when it comes to selfies, however. The Samsung flagship is doing a better job at HDR, while in normal conditions the two phones achieve similar results. At night, the two devices take on different paths once more. The Note 10 Plus takes longer exposures, which result in brighter images, but if your hand isn't very steady, there might be some smudged elements. Meanwhile, the iPhone sacrifices some light in favor of sharpness and quicker shots. Still, both phones do an admirable job when it comes to low-light photography, something that can't be said for older iPhones. We can spend hours nitpicking photos and other details about these two phones, but we covered the most important aspects, and that's enough for now. More about the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus you can find on our website, phonerine.com. To not miss any of our videos, hit that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you in the next one.